Hello wrestling fans, welcome to a brand new episode of 360 Wrestling Fanatic. I am your host Lance Brock. It's Wednesday, and you know what that means. It is time to recap a new episode of AEW Dynamite for Wednesday, November 2nd, 2002. I am your host Lance Brock. Thank you for tuning in tonight, everybody. As I just mentioned, going to talk some AEW Dynamite taking place from Baltimore, Maryland at the Chesapeake uh, Arena. Our commentators for tonight, once again, Tony Schiavone, Excalibur, and Taz. And then later on in the show, they would be joined by Ring of Honor's Ian Riccoboni. And we start things off with a pretty good match here. Jay Lethal taking on Darby Allen. Good match to start off the show. And then we see someone dressed up as Sting make their way to the ringside area. And they attack Darby Allen. At first, the commentators ask if it is Sting, but to be honest, I didn't really think it really quite looked like him anyway, and you could tell it was a mask, but then finally, they stated on commentary that it wasn't the real thing, and that allows Jay Lethal to get the win over Darby Allen, and... He celebrates with Lethal, Sanjay Dutt, and Sanam Singh, and he is unmasked, and it is revealed to be Cole Carter from the factory. And then the lights go out, and then we hear Sting's music, and then the, the four of them go out and start to go up the ramp like they're going to meet Sting up by the entrance. But then in the ring behind Darby Allen, we see Jeff Jarrett in the ring with his usual guitar, breaks it over the head of Darby Allen, leaving him in a puddle of blood. And he cuts a promo and pretty much rages war against all of AEW. And then we get an interview with John Moxley. And we have another video just like we had last week. First we see the young, the elite. The Young Bucks and Kenny Omega becoming the first ever AEW Trios champions. And then they're kind of, it's kind of like they're erased from the history of AEW. Because then we see the Death Triangle winning the Trios championships. So we continue to build towards the return of the elite to AEW is definitely curious to see how they're going to come back and when they're going to come back. Could be full gear, to be honest. I wouldn't be surprised if they're saving them for the pay-per-view to have them return there. But we'll just have to wait and see And next up, we have John Moxley taking on Lee Morardi. And Moxley gets the submission win. And Renee Paquette has a sit-down interview with Soraya. And next up. We have the Daddy Ass Birthday Bash and it is crashed by the guns. And then W. Morrissey attacks him 
from behind. But that was after low that the claimed actually said they want Billy Gunn to adopt them. And then is when W. Morrissey comes into the ring and attacks them. But then they are saved by FTR. And next up is Chris Jericho's open challenge to face any former Ring of Honor champion. And it is the returning to AEW Boom Boom Colt Cabana. It's been a while since we have seen Colt in um, AEW. He was on the last... Ring of Honor pay-per-view, though. That's before Dishonor, but actual, any AEW broadcasts, it has been a while since we've seen them. And it has been the first time since we've seen them, since the whole media scrum with CM Punk, where he said all that stuff about him. But it's good to see Colt Cabana back in an AEW ring. But it is Chris Jericho getting the win in this match? Not really a surprise, but it was still good to see Colt back. Pretty good match here. And I'm sure that Jericho is going to hold on to the Ring of Honor World Championship until at least the final battle. And... Still have over uh, about a month away until then. It'll be interesting to see if they could build up somebody like from Ring of Honor's past, uh, maybe Claudio or maybe someone else to have them win the world title back for Ring of Honor. Brian Danielson, possibly. I know they've already had that match twice now, so maybe not Danielson, but maybe somebody else. And then the Jericho Appreciation Society. Once again, target Ring of Honor commentator Ian Riccoboni. Luckily, the Blackpool Combat Club does come out to make the save for Ian as they brawl all over the stage. And next up is the three-way match for the AEW All-Atlantic Championship. The champion Orange Cassidy taking on Luchasaurus with Christian Cage in his corner. And Ray Phoenix representing the Death Triangle. I thought this match was very, pretty much very entertaining, actually. And it is Orange Cassidy retaining. But first, we see Jungle Boy make his way out and do a splash. Onto Luchasaurus off the stage through a table. And Orange Cassidy gets the win in the ring. And then. We also see. Pac. About to use the hammer once again. And then it is. From New Japan Pro Wrestling. Shibata. Comes out to make the save. And he hands. Or Orange Cassidy hands. Shibata the contract. And this Friday night. At Rampage. We will see Orange Cassidy versus Shibata. For the AEW All-Atlantic Championship. And. We see. um, I'm not sure if he. He might be. Uh, I'm not sure if he's a singer or an an actor, but some guy, Rick Ross, in the back. And he's with um, 
swerving or glory and he kind of tries to play peacemaker try to get them back on the same page after what Swerve did to Billy Gunn's fingers last week and at the time Keith Lee he acted like he didn't know anything about it and he wasn't too happy with Swerve tonight on Dynamite AEW TBS Championship is on the line. Jade Cargill retains defeating Marina Schaefer. And while the match is going on, we see Vicky Guerrero and Nyla Rose, who has possession of the TBS Championship. And Nyla's on the mic trying to distract Jade. But for most of the match, it doesn't work. And then Jade focuses her attention over to Nyla, starts to go up the ramp, and then Nyla reminds her that the referee is counting her out. So then she gets back in the ring and to get the victory. Then next up, we have an eerie video package of the House of Black and and Malachi Black is in this video so it looks like we could soon be seeing the return of Malachi Black to the House of Black pretty soon in AEW and now it is time for the main event of the evening on tonight's Dynamite for the Ring of Honor Television Championship, Samoa Joe vs. Brian Cage. I thought this was a good main event this week. Samoa Joe retains the TV title. And then there's a bra with um the embassy and they attack Samoa Joe and then Samoa Joe's partner in War Joe Warlow comes out to make the save but then Powerhouse Hobbs makes his way to the ring to attack Samoa Joe as Dynamite goes off the air So, that was tonight's episode of AEW Dynamite. Good episode. Uh, Going into the show tonight, I definitely wasn't expecting to see Jeff Jarrett make his AEW debut. So, good episode. And to talk about a little bit of news... I just saw it on a notification for an alert on the Ringside News app that Jeff Jarrett now has an executive position apparently in AEW after his Dynamite debut tonight. Not quite sure what kind of executive position that is just yet but apparently it is some kind of executive position and talk about some little bit of news this isn't really too much of a surprise but apparently Vince McMahon is completely done with WWE and will not be returning at all. Or actually now what I see on Russell feed is that Jeff Jarrett is going to be the director of business development in AEW. Just reading that now. 
And some more AEW news. We will have a match for the interim AEW Women's Championship. Tony Storm taking on Jamie Hayter as announced on tonight's episode of Dynamite. And WWE has filed a trademark for Queen of the Ring. So apparently they're going to be doing that again. The last winner is Selena Vega, who has recently returned to WWE and has not been using the Queen angle. And I don't remember if I... My memory is bad. I'm old now, but I don't remember if I've actually mentioned this on the... Last episode of the podcast or not. But. It was announced that on January 1st. That Shinsuke Nakamura will be wrestling a match for Pro Wrestling Noah. And it will be against the great Muda. Who's going to be retiring at. What I understand is that the end of January, I believe, will be the last match for Great Muda. But KG Muda will be having his last match in February. And of course, we already know it's been announced that Sting will be competing in the last match. And now we know that we will see... Nakamura versus Muda, which should be a very good match. And that is one I'm definitely looking forward to. And what I see here is what happened after Dynamite went off the air tonight. This Tony Khan made his way out to probably like thank the live crowd. I know he usually does that. He did that here in Detroit. Back at uh, Blood and Guts. And then, but this time though, Stokey halfway interrupted him and made him go to the back. And that is it for this episode of 360 Wrestling Fanatic. Thank you for listening tonight. On Spreaker, YouTube, or wherever else you may be listening to this on. Hopefully, we'll keep doing regular episodes of the podcast, 360 Wrestling Fanatic. And hopefully the other ones too, 360 Fanatic Unleashed. Hopefully that will come back soon. Maybe an off Thursday. Maybe a watch with me. I don't even remember the last time had a watch with me episode or an unleashed episode for that matter and stay tuned for more unboxings soon uh hopefully still a few weeks away though from the november pro wrestling crate those are on the 360 youtube and hopefully everybody enjoys those videos And I hope to have a recap this weekend of Saturday's WWE Crown Jewel, which will be headlined by Roman Reigns versus Logan Paul for the Universal Championship. And hopefully I have one or two more episodes before then. We'll just have to see. If I get around to doing any more episodes, remember if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions at all, 360 Wrestling Podcast at gmail.com is the email. And subscribe to the YouTube channels. Like I said, there are two of them. If you want to, just one, but two of them would be best. And if you want, if you have a little extra money, you can support 360 Wrestling Podcasts 
make the podcast even better. Anchor.fm slash 360 wrestling podcast 360. I'll put in the description as always and also streamlabs.com slash 360 wrestling podcast. Hopefully, we'll start streaming again if I can figure it out. Definitely not the best tech internet person in the world. But I'm sure if you listen to this podcast before, I'm sure you know that. And once again, thank you for tonight for listening to the yeah, for listening tonight. So you can't even talk. Some podcast host I am, and like I said, hope to be back again real soon. I hope everyone enjoyed AEW Dynamite tonight. But until the next episode, I am Lance, and I am a wrestling fanatic.